Next, we're going to talk about balancing redox equations. So it's essential to always write a correctly balanced equation that represents what happens in a chemical reaction. And this can actually be pretty tricky when you are dealing with redox equations. Now there's a couple of different ways to do this and it can actually get really complicated. I almost hesitate to teach this because it's almost never on the regents, but a couple years ago it was and the kids didn't do too good on it. So I figured we better at least go over it a little bit and we'll talk more about it in class. So fortunately, there's two ways to do this that are available based on the fact that total electrons gained in reduction is equal to the total electrons lost in oxidation. And the two methods involve using oxidation number changes and using half reactions. I'm gonna talk about a way to use half reactions to do this because it's the easiest and it's the, one that I've, it's the only one that I've seen um, on the Regents exam. So remember half reaction is an equation showing just the oxidation or just the reduction that takes place in a chemical reaction. Uh, they're written first and then balanced separately and then finally combined to a full equation at the end. So here are the steps on how to use a half reaction method. So step number one is to write the unbalanced equation in ionic form, write separate half reaction equations for the oxidation and reduction, balance the atoms in the half reaction, and then add enough electrons to one side of each half reaction, then multiply each half reaction by a number to make the electrons equal in both, then add the balanced half reactions to show an overall equation, and then finally add the spectator ions and balance the equation. Like I said, this can get pretty complicated. And depending on the type of equation, um, in, in, in reality, you actually might wanna switch and use the other version of balancing half reactions. But the examples I'm going to show you are actually pretty easy. So let's just go through them. Okay, so in this equation here, uh, it's a very simplified equation, uh, but it's going to get the, the point across. So in this example, a tin atom and silver ion are reacting and we get a tin ion and a silver atom. So we're just exchanging some electrons in a very simple uh, oxidation reduction reaction. So uh, tin gets a, a zero, silver gets a plus one charge, the tin two ion gets a plus two uh, oxidation number, and the silver atom gets a zero because it's uncombined. Okay, so in the oxidation half reaction, um, it looks like tin is oxidized. It goes from a zero to a plus two. So let's go ahead and write that. Tin with its zero oxidation number turned into a tin two ion with a plus two oxidation number. And it did this by losing uh, electrons. And it has to lose exactly two electrons to um, balance out the charges. Two minus uh, two plus is zero on the left, we have zero. So that is a uh, half reaction for oxygen. Next, let's write the reduction half reaction. So in the reduction half reaction, silver ions turned into silver atoms. So silver ions with their one plus oxidation number turned into silver atoms with their zero oxidation number. So it has to gain electrons to do this. So a silver ion only needs to gain one electron to turn into a silver atom. So notice that the amount of electrons lost in oxidation, two, does not equal the amount of electrons gained in reduction, one. Okay, so um, that can't be. So what we do is we put uh, brackets around the bottom one here, and we need to multiply the whole half reaction by some coefficient, some factor that's going to bring our electron number up to two. So in this case, it would be two. So... Um, this is just showing two silver ions gain two electrons to turn into two silver atoms. And then our last step is to kind of just squash these two half reactions back together into one. Whatever changes we made down here, we're gonna make them up here as well. So every time we see a silver ion, I'm gonna multiply it by two. So I'll put that there. Every time we see a silver atom, I'm gonna multiply that by two. So that is your balanced half reaction. So those steps look pretty complicated, those seven steps. But this is really actually all we did in this example. We just wrote the half reactions and then multiplied them by some factor to make the amount of electrons lost equal to the amount of electrons gained. 
Okay, go ahead and give this one a try. Uh, remember, first you're going to write the oxidation numbers, figure out who's oxidized, who's reduced, write the half reactions, and then multiply those half reactions by some factor to make the electrons equal. So go ahead and give this a try when you're ready. I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so chromium gets a zero. Lead two gets a plus two oxidation number. Chromium three, of course, gets a plus three. The sum equals its charge. And lead gets a zero as well. So it looks like chromium was oxidized as it went from zero to three plus. And then you ask yourself, how did it do this? By uh, losing three electrons. Next, we have the reduction half reaction. Of course, that must be lead two with its plus two oxidation number turning into lead with its zero oxidation number. And uh, we need to gain two electrons to accomplish this. So again, the amount of electrons lost, three, does not equal the amount of electrons gained. So I need to make them the same. So I need to multiply both of these half reactions separately by some number to make them the same. I can't make them both three, I can't make them both four, but I can make them both six. So in this first, or in this bottom half reaction, I'll multiply it by three. And in this top half reaction, I'll multiply the whole thing by two. And then remember, whatever changes we made down here, we just kind of make them in uh, above, or you kind of just squash these two half reactions together. So anytime you see a chromium, I'll put a two. A chromium three ion also gets a two. Uh, down at the bottom here, anytime I see a lead two ion, it gets a three. And every time I have a lead atom, it also gets a three. So there's the balanced uh, redox reaction for this equation. So in summary here, balancing half reactions can be tricky. Like I said, they're generally not on the New York State Regents exam, but they have been. So to balance them, we're going to just learn the half reaction method and hope that's good enough. So the way we do this is we write the half reactions separately and we multiply the half reactions by some coefficient that will make the amount of electrons lost equal to the amount of electrons gained. And then you just combine the half reactions back into one whole equation. Uh, we'll practice a couple of these in class, and I'll show you those questions that were on the Regents a couple of years ago, um, and that's probably all we're going to say for this topic here.